Welcome back to Bracket Science. It is Monday, January 22nd. It is late at night. North Carolina is playing a basketball game right now against Wake Forest, so don't expect us to talk about that game. But we have a lot more to talk about in today's episode. We saw three top 10 teams lose on Saturday. One more fell on Sunday. What does this mean for these teams? Who are some of the risers? Who are some of the fallers in terms of our bracketology? We're going to get into all of the results on Saturday that are worth noting, along with previewing our Sweet 16 like we do every single week. We have a lot of games Monday through Friday this week. Not so much on Monday. We're not going to talk about the North Carolina game because it's going on right now along with Kansas. We'll be posting this tomorrow morning on Tuesday. So we're not going to get deep into those, but we're also going to get into some of the AP poll discussion. A little bit about our rankings. We just dropped our rankings and they just released the AP poll just earlier today. So let's start. Let's get right into it. Starting with some of the top 10 teams that lost. I know we're starting off negative. We're going to talk about teams that should have won but got beat. And then we'll talk about some of the teams that took care of business. But let's start with the most surprising one of the night was number three Kansas visiting West Virginia on Saturday night where West Virginia beat them 91 to 85. West Virginia came into the game six and 11 on the year. Yee. Score was tied at 51 at the half. It was a high scoring game. Both teams were making shots. Raekwon Battle ended up being the story for West Virginia. He had 23 points, nine rebounds. Kansas, the story, more on Kansas than it is West Virginia. A great win in the Bob Huggin list. West Virginia Mountaineers, but uh, Kansas may not be the powerhouse this year that we've seen them dominate the Big 12 over the past couple of years. Now Houston's joining, something to look out next year. Arizona is also joining, may not be uh, Kansas's uh, conference every single year, year in and year out. Kansas, tough loss there. We'll talk more about the Big 12 here in a little bit as there's always a lot of ranked matchups. But let's go into Pitt beating Duke at Duke, the number seven team in the nation, 82-76. This was surprising because just 11 days before, Duke won at Pitt by 22, and the game was not a 22-point game. Duke led by 30 in this game. Pitt had chances at home against North Carolina and Syracuse just earlier in the week to pick up big wins and lost both and lost both by double figures. This win just kind of came out of nowhere. Obviously, Duke just must have looked past them. They beat them easily at Pitt and then all of a sudden just shows how crazy college basketball is but the story the reason this happened was because of Blake Hinson he went ballistic 24 points 8 of 10 shooting and the craziest stat 7 of 7 for 3 at Cameron Indoor at the end of the game the picture went viral he stood on the table on the scorer's table at the end of the game after they had already won and was just giving it to the Duke student section. That was a cool image to see. Student section was giving it to him right back, but obviously Henson had the upper hand there. Tough loss for Duke. They obviously just overpassed him. I'm not, I'm not dropping Duke too far because they are better than Pitt. They beat Pitt the other day. It was obvious. They just looked past him a little bit, but this is, this is big for North Carolina because North Carolina now has a two game lead in the ACC with this Duke loss. North Carolina, they beat Boston College the other day. We're not going to talk much about that game because it was expected. They uh, they look like the best team in the conference, North Carolina. They're all the way up to three in this week's AP poll, which we'll also talk about here in a little bit. And then also out of the Big 12, number nine, Baylor visited Texas in a game that Texas needed to win, and they did 75-73. to 73. It was crazy coming down the stretch. It was 73-70 uh, Texas, and then Jalen Bridges hit a crazy step back three. Then Tyrese Hunter for Texas, full speed ahead, made a layup at the buzzer. He had a great game, 21 points, four for seven from three. Huge win for Texas's resume. They needed it bad. Let's let's get into some of the top 25 teams that won in some great games, especially out of the Big East, which is where we're going to start. These three games, we'll talk about a combined uh, differential in the score of just five points. Great games. The early one. Marquette, number 17 team in the nation, visited St. John's with Rick Pitino back, being back from COVID. Marquette beat them 73-72. Oh, neither team could put this game away. This game was at Madison Square Garden. It wasn't at St. John's University, but still a home crowd for St. John's. Just, just to summarize the end of the game, Marquette was, it was 73-72 with what felt like forever at the end of the game. They had a free throw. 
missed. Tyler Kolick missed some big free throws from Marquette. St. John's came down, missed a shot. Marquette got it back, missed the free throw again. St. John's came down, missed a shot again. Neither team could get the bucket, but Marquette eventually ended up on top. They needed this win bad for their confidence. All five starters were in double figures for Marquette. Also, Igadaro, he led the team with 17. But the story was him on defense. He held St. John's star Joel Soriano to just three of five shooting, only attempting five shots. Big win for Shaka Smart's team there. They needed this one for their confidence. Maybe it'll get them rolling again. But the game of the day was also out of the Big East, but it was number 18 Creighton visiting Seton Hall. Game ended in triple overtime. Creighton ended up winning 97-294. Kadari Richmond for Seton Hall was great. The loss was not on him at all, nor anyone on their team. They played great. He had a triple-double. Ryan Kalkbrenner for Creighton had his biggest night of the year. He had 28 points, 9 rebounds. The other two of the big three from Creighton, Baylor Shireman and Trey Alexander. Baylor Shireman had 20 points, 10 rebounds. Trey Alexander had 23 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. Didn't get much help from their teammates. Ash, Ashworth had uh, had 11. It's kind of become the story that's just kind of these three and then everyone else. Ashworth did hit a big uh, big bucket at the end to send it to either to overtime or double overtime. But uh, this was this was an incredible game to watch. Seton Hall is legit, but this – this might be a, the kind of win that gets Creighton back on track. They just need to find some scoring outside of Alexander Shireman and Kalkbrenner. But it was nice to see them finally run the offense through Ryan Kalkbrenner. He can be such a tough presence down low. Good win for Creighton. Good showing for Seton Hall. Moving on to the team that was tied with Seton Hall going into the day for the number one number one spot in the Big East. It was the number one team in the nation. UConn visited Villanova, and UConn ended up winning the game 66-65. to we haven't had a bad beat in a while. Here is maybe the worst beat I've seen all year, other than maybe we talked about that uh, that Yale versus Vermont game. That's what it was, where they had the uh, – we won't get into that, but this one was just as bad. Line finished at UConn minus three and a half. It was 66-62 UConn, so they were covering – just a couple seconds left in a Villanova. I, I don't even know who it was on their team. Hucked up beyond half court and nothing but that just killed the soul of a lot of UConn. UConn fans, there are a lot of UConn betters. Uh, most of the money was on UConn, so this made the books a lot of money. It was a horrible beat. UConn ended up winning 66-65, should have been 66-62. But Villanova ends up getting the cover, but the uh, UConn still pulled out the win to maintain their number one spot in the AP poll. Tristan Newton led the game with 25 points. This could have been a game changing win for Villanova and the rest of their season. It was close the entire way. Kyle Neptune squad just falling a little bit short. Still a good fight for Villanova. Let's move on to the tent to the SEC, excuse me, starting with Tennessee, who hosted Alabama, and Tennessee beat them 91 to 71. Dalton Connect stayed hot with 25 points. This was Alabama's first loss in the SEC. They just didn't really match up with Tennessee, but that home environment was was something special. When Tennessee scores the ball, they may be the best team in the nation, especially with Dalton Connect's uh, heat, heater he is on right now. If if it wasn't for Dalton Connect, I don't think this team would even they'd be hovering around the 25 top 25 mark week in and week out. He is just carrying this offense right now. He is that spark that they needed. Dalton Connect, he may be the SEC player of the year. He may be a first team All-American. He is must watch TV. Everyone tune in to Dalton Connect games going forward. Also in the SEC was a ranked on ranked matchup. It was number 22 Ole Miss visiting number 13 Auburn. And Auburn just beat the brakes off Ole Miss 82 to 59. Auburn now the only undefeated team in the SEC. They're 5-0. and They've won 11 in a row. Ole Miss, this team, this Chris Beard miracle may, may, may be ending, getting into SEC play. This SEC conference maybe the most fun conference to watch. I think it really is. They have three teams now in the top eight of the AP poll, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Auburn. And yet they have some great unranked teams as well with the likes of Alabama and Teams like that now all miss even unranked, but they have a they have a good story going. From one great conference to another, let's move to the Big 12, where number 24 Iowa State traveled to number 19 TCU and beat them 73-72. Ended up being a close game at the end, but it wasn't 
for a while. Iowa State actually led 44 to 26 at half. TCU hit a garbage time buzzer beater that didn't really mean much, but uh, it was a great win for Iowa State to go in there and beat TCU. Also in the Big 12, number 15, Oklahoma traveled to Cincinnati. And Oklahoma won 69 to 65, kind of proving their legitimacy. They, This team is legit. JV on McCollum is legit. Cincinnati, they're off now to a two and three start in the Big 12, but they're still... They've, they've, they've played some close games. This team, don't count Cincinnati out yet. They they may very well be in the tournament this year. Another ranked-on-ranked matchup was number 20 BYU visiting number 25 Texas Tech. BYU got off to a big lead, but Texas Tech came all the way back and won 85-78. Two teams tied at the Big 12 top right now. What if I were to tell you it is Texas Tech and Kansas State? They're both 4-1. and one. Five ranked teams are right behind them, though, at 3-2. and two. The three preseason uh, top picks were Houston, Kansas, Baylor. Those are three and two. Oklahoma and Iowa State are also three and two. They have been probably the maybe the two best teams outside of those top three. But Texas Tech and Kansas State now have something to say about that. BYU with this loss dropped to two and three. Cincinnati, as we mentioned, also two and three. TCU also zero and or two and three. And then West Virginia is two and three after that win against Kansas. Texas and UCF are also two and three. Moving on to the Pac-12 in a game that, ooh, could have gotten ugly for Arizona. UCLA visited Arizona. Arizona was ranked number 12 in the nation, and UCLA led 45-28 to in the second half with only about 15 minutes left. But Arizona came all the way back, won the game 77-71. Could have been a disaster, but a lot of fight for uh, Tommy Lloyd's team to come all the way back and beat a very disappointing UCLA team. This kind of shows that UCLA does have some talent. They're, they're, they're not good. They they don't want to play for Mick Cronin, it seems, but yeah, maybe they got a little something going there, but way to fight back for Arizona there. On to the Big tw- Big Ten, number two team in the nation, Purdue took care of business at Iowa, 84 to 70. Iowa does not have a tournament resume as of right now. They had the chance in this game to maybe pick up that key win that boosts them into the conversation, and they just didn't get it, never really had a shot mainly because of Zach Eady, like usual. He had 30 points, 18 rebounds. It just seems like a Zach Eady game, but we should not be normalizing this. 30 points, 18 rebounds, just incredible. It's unheard of what this guy is doing in college basketball. He got some help from his teammates as well. Lance Jones had 17. Fletcher Lawyer had 12. Braden Smith had nine points, six rebounds, nine assists. Purdue is now half a game back of Wisconsin in the Big Ten. We'll see how that conference pans out going forward. A few other notable results from some unranked games out of the Mountain West, which we've talked about a lot. San Diego State visited Boise State, and San Diego State got beat 66 to 67. Boise State with a big win. Kind of starting to kind of realize that these Mountain West games, the top six teams, we've talked about them a lot. It's uh, Colorado State, Nevada, Utah State, San Diego State, Boise State, and uh, even UNL, UNLV. Who else am I missing? Missing one more, throw one more in there. I, I I don't know who I'm missing. I can't remember who I said. But um, anyways, the home team just seems to always kind of pull it out. San Diego State was actually favored in this game. It was probably a wrong team favored situation. It probably should have been Boise State. It always seems to be the home team who is uh, who's winning these these top matchups at least. All right, let's move on now to Miami visiting Syracuse and this game just has to be mentioned because of the buzzer beater by Syracuse Judah Mintz 72 to 69 Syracuse won big win for Syracuse there they got a chance to go dancing this year this team is this team is getting better and better they had that big win over Oregon a couple weeks ago they beat them by 20 Miami on the other hand they are trending downward I I picked this team surprisingly to win the ACC this year and it's it's not going to happen this team's not very good unfortunately Showed signs early in the year, but they, they've got a lot of work to do to uh, end up making the tournament this year. Out of the WCC, St. Mary's visited San Francisco. Both teams came in undefeated in the WCC. St. Mary's beat up on them 77-60. to 60. We're starting to see things from St. Mary's right now. They had a rough start. They started off the year 3-5, and five, but now they're undefeated in league play. They're actually getting into the conversation for an at-large bid, which would be great for the WCC think the best case for the WCC to get two bids in there would be St. Mary's running the table and then probably Gonzaga winning the tournament or even a San Francisco. 
that would probably get them two teams in St. Mary's. I think if they go undefeated in the regular season, you you got to give them an at-large bid because this WCC is better than it's been before, even with Gonzaga being down. That was a great win there by St. Mary's. All right, let's get into the AAC on Sunday. We're done with Saturday games. Moving into Sunday, a couple games we got to talk about. The two notable teams in the AAC this year are Memphis and FAU. That's who we're going to get into. Number 10, Memphis lost at Tulane, 81 to 79, two losses in a row. They were ranked number 10. They dropped down to 19, I think, in this week's AP poll. Number 10 was too high for this team. This team is not a top 10 team, if if I say so myself. They're, the computers don't like them. We talked about it in the last podcast. A lot of their wins earlier in the year are getting worse and worse, like like Virginia, even uh, even Clemson, I guess. But uh, David Jones did have 32. He's great for Memphis. He had 32 points. But Tulane, in a great environment there, beat beat Memphis, finally got that big win for the program. Tulane is very good this year. We'll, we'll, we'll get into them in a second after we talk about FAU nearing a disaster at UTSA. We saw UTSA take Memphis to overtime. They also took FAU to overtime. They lost to Memphis. They did lose to FAU 112 to 103. Man, this could have been ugly for the American Conference as well, hoping to get at least two bids in there. John L. Davis, he had 34 points for FAU. The the offense is not an issue for FAU. They have all the pieces. Elijah Martin finally had a big game here. Just their defense. They, this team does not play defense. We talked a lot about how good of uh, rebounders their guards are, but it's it's this team doesn't play defense right now. It it could very well be a one bid league. As we said, Memphis's resume is starting to look worse and worse, and FAU is near dropping games against. Sub 500 teams every week, it seems. They they get off to these horrible starts. Every time I feel like I check an FAU game, that shouldn't be close. They're down at least 10 in the first half. With this being said, they are tied atop the AAC right now. FAU and Charlotte are the two teams. Charlotte did beat FAU, so they have that tiebreaker. But uh, F, uh, UAB, SMU, USF, North Texas are all just half a game back, but they are 4-1 and one, with FAU and Charlotte being 5-1. and one. So they have a chance to join the top once they play one more game. And if they pick up a win, they will join them at the top. North Texas off to a good start. Watch out for North Texas. Could very easily see them winning the conference this year. SMU is also loved by the computers. So we'll see how it goes there. Let's move on to the Big Ten where Michigan State visited Maryland. And Michigan State held off the win 61-59, to just a defensive game. Second half was ugly. It was an ugly basketball game to watch. Maryland won the second half, actually, 27 to 17. Ugh. Only 44 total points scored in that second half. With this being said, Michigan State is, they're in the conversation as the second best team in the Big Ten. The first is obviously Purdue, but next I would say it's probably Wisconsin. And then I'd throw in Michigan State and Illinois in that conversation. It's battle between those two, those three. I'd probably go Purdue one, Wisconsin two, Illinois three, and Michigan State four. Personally, then below that you got you've got the Ohio States, you've got the the Northwesterns, Nebraska's, the Maryland's. Even Maryland has been disappointing this year, but um, ugh, even even Indiana throw them in there somewhere, but they're they don't have a tournament resume as of right now. Michigan State though, they're they're starting to come together. They were supposed to be the second best team in the Big Ten this year. I have them at four right now. It's it's close though. Out of the Pac-12, a big notable game was Oregon visiting Utah, two, two teams that we have in the tournament as of right now. But uh, Utah did win the game 80-77. to 77. This was also kind of a battle for the second-best team in the Pac-12. Arizona, Oregon, and Arizona State are all tied at the top of the conference. They're 5-2. and two. Utah, Colorado, and Stanford are half a game back at 5-3. and three. I think the conversation for the second best team in the Pac-12 is between Oregon, Utah, and Colorado. I'd probably give the edge to Colorado just because Colorado has been hurt. They've been injured. They're starting to get their guys back. They have KJ Simpson. He's really good. Then I'd probably give it to it's it's tough to determine because this is a uh, this was a road game for Oregon, but they they did well. Jackson Shellstead is legit. Utah is loved by a lot. I've spoken on here how they're not my favorite team, but I they're they're still a solid team. They're not a bad team, but um. Yeah, that Pac-12 is going to be interesting. We'll see maybe how much Arizona can win this conference by. I fully expect them to win it, but UCLA, that game brought up some concerns, but it showed a lot of heart to fight back there. But Utah picks up a big win over Oregon. That is it for the uh, the weekend recap. 
let's get in a little bit of our new rankings. We just released our rankings. The AP poll just came out today. Let's start with ours, and then we'll talk about the AP poll and some big differences. We do have Purdue at number one. We've had Purdue at number one. I think their resume is better than UConn. I think they're the more dominant team right now. I, 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 I see the argument for UConn at number one. We personally just have Purdue, then UConn, and then we do have Tennessee, or not Tennessee, out of the SEC. Excuse me. I don't even know where that came from. Kentucky out of the SEC at number three, Carolina four, and then Tennessee five. But in the AP poll, it does go UConn, Purdue, North Carolina three, Houston four, Tennessee five, and Kentucky six. We do have Houston at number six. Then we do have Auburn at number seven, way up there. In the AP poll, Auburn did move up, but they only moved up to number eight. They dropped Kansas to number seven. Well, we dropped Kansas all the way to number 10 after that tough loss against West Virginia. I just, I'm a Kansas fan. As you see, got the shirt on right here, but they're just, they're, I, I don't see it from this team this year. I, I don't think this is near one of Bill Self's best teams. I don't think the guard play is there. I have them all the way to number 10. I only dropped Duke to number 11 just because, I mean, this team's better than Pitt. It was just, a, it was a freak loss. It happens. I have them at number 11. A few other notable things just going down the list. We do rank 32 teams. Obviously, the AP poll only has, has uh, 25. We did move Iowa State all the way up to 18, while the AP poll only moved them up two spots to 23. They were 20. They, no, they were 24th, excuse me. They only moved them up one spot, which I thought was strange. They did move Texas Tech up five spots to 20 when Iowa State won on the road, while Texas Tech won at home. The AP poll does not know what they're doing for those who who don't know, but um thought that was interesting why why they did that. I would definitely give give Iowa State the the benefit over Texas Tech, but the AP poll dropped Memphis all the way to 19, while we actually dropped Memphis all the way to 27. This team is just not that dominant, I don't think. For, for, we have Florida Atlantic at 26. They're also outside our top 25 as of now, but I, I someone asked who I see winning the AAC, and I, I, I really don't know. I, I, I think it's a coin toss between Florida Atlantic and Memphis. If my life was on the line, I'd probably pick Florida Atlantic. As we talked about in their uh, the records in, in conference play, it's it's a coin flip. It could be any team. It could be North Texas for all I know, especially with how Florida Atlantic and Memphis have looked. Taking Florida Atlantic as of now, but but we'll see. Now, the AP poll also moved Colorado State and New Mexico back in. They are 24 and 25. They have been in our polls for a while. We actually have New Mexico at 30 and 31, but as we said, we rank rank 32 teams. That's about it for the notables. Clemson is still not ranked in the AP poll. We still have them at 21. We still believe in Clemson. We also have Alabama at 22. I do believe in Mark Sears and Alabama. Well, they are not ranked in the AP poll. That's it for our discussion on some of the rankings. Let's talk about our Sweet 16, our upcoming games. We already talked about Wake Forest and North Carolina, which is going on right now. We're not going to talk about that. Cincinnati and Kansas are playing. We're not going to preview that. That game is tonight in a little bit. I don't want to talk about that because, quite frankly, this podcast is going to be released tomorrow morning. So we're going to dive right into Tuesday night games. Tuesday and Wednesday have a loaded slate of college basketball. Well, not a lot of ranked on ranked matchups. We'll get into a few of them here, but a lot of big ones. The uh, FanDuel lines are obviously not out, but the Ken Palm lines are. So let's get right into it, starting in the Big 12, because where else would we start but the best conference? At 7 o'clock, Texas visits Oklahoma, Oklahoma favored by seven in this game. This game is on ESPN. This should be a fun one to watch. Texas coming off that big win. Oklahoma also coming off that big win at Cincinnati. Now, I apologize if some of these rankings are a little bit off because um, I did put it in as the old rankings when I wrote this, but um, as of now, I'll try and go back and forth. Oklahoma is number 11 now, so Number 11, they're favored by seven in this game. It's kind of a coin flip game. I feel like seven's a little bit too much to this Texas team. Texas just got some confidence back. Dylan DeSue has made all the impact in the world for Texas. I think I would take Texas plus the seven in this one. Also at seven o'clock, number now six, Kentucky visits South Carolina on the SEC network. Kentucky favored by three at Ken Palm. I don't think this is enough points. I'm, I'm, I like South Carolina. I think they have a good team. I'm still not sold on them to beat the Kentucky team, even at home. I think Kentucky is too good. They got Ivisic from, uh, for those who don't know, he just got eligible for Kentucky. This is huge for them. He is a stud. He came in, knocked down four immediate shots for Kentucky 
in their win against Georgia, where they scored 105 points. This Kentucky offense is so powerful. I think Kentucky gets the job done here. Also at 7 o'clock, Ohio State visits Nebraska on Peacock. Get that Peacock subscription. Nebraska is favored by two. And I think you got to take Nebraska minus the two in this game. Nebraska just beat Northwestern. That was a big win for them. And Ohio State is a very bad road team. Ohio State did beat up on Penn State pretty bad. They got redemption on them. But Nebraska at home, minus two. Give me that 100%. At 8.30 out of the Big East, Xavier visits number 17, Creighton. Creighton favored by seven. This game's on Fox Sports 1. I think I'll take Creighton to cover the seven in this game. As we said, Creighton got that big win against Seton Hall. It feels like one of those wins that they battled through. They got it done. Now it's time for this team to just roll. I think that was the turning page in their year this year. Give me Creighton minus the seven. At nine o'clock, the very disappointing Jawan Howard's Michigan Wolverines visit number two, Purdue. This game is also on Peacock. Purdue favored by 17. Yikes. This Michigan team is in shambles. They will be without uh, Doug McDaniel. As we said, he's only suspended for road games in a strange, strange place, whatever that means from Jawan Howard. Purdue minus 17. I think Purdue might win this game by 30. They're not going to stop Zach Eady. Give me, give me Purdue minus 17. So many points, but we'll see. Give me Purdue. At 9 o'clock, a ranked-on-ranked -ranked matchup. Finally, number 4 Houston visits number 21 BYU Houston favored by three in this game this game's on ESPN plus ranked on ranked on ESPN plus get that subscription that's how good the big 12 is this year Houston they're starting to roll BYU has been very solid this this is a game of two newcomers into the big 12 Houston was expected to be good BYU was not but the computers love BYU and they have been picking up some big wins I'm sold on BYU I think they're good I'm also sold on Houston. I think they're very good. Houston, they don't have the offensive firepower to be a great road team. They do have the defense. I think just being at home, I'll take BYU plus the three. Not very confidently in this one. It's a tough line. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the line comes out on FanDuel. On Wednesday, let's move into some Big East play. A battle of two teams looking to get an at-large bid at 6.30. The early game, Providence visits Seton Hall. Seton Hall favored by three. Games on FS1, this line will be higher than three. It will be at least three and a half or four and a half, I would expect. I will still take Seton Hall with the points. I think they're better than Providence right now. Kadari Richmond has been rolling. One thing to look out for, though, is that loss. Will that will that linger a little bit? A lot of teams play better off of a loss, but after a triple overtime loss where you grinded and lost at home, we'll see how they do. I'm I'm not sold at all on Providence now, unfortunately, because of that loss of Bryce Hopkins. I didn't think this team was that good in general, but that loss, losing their best player hurts even worse. Give me Seton Hall. I think the line will be no, more, maybe even five and a half in this game. A big game out of the ACC is at seven o'clock is NC State visiting Virginia. Virginia favored by four. This game is on the ACC network. Both teams desperately need a win. Virginia finally picked up a road win in their season at Georgia Tech the other night. And I, I'm sold on Virginia at home. I think Tony Bennett is a great coach. They don't lose home games very often. I'm not sold on NC State. I will take Virginia minus the four in this game. My favorite game of Wednesday night is out of the SEC, as I said, maybe the most exciting conference in college basketball. The now number eight Auburn Tigers visit Alabama. Alabama actually favored by two via Ken Palm. This game is on ESPN. Alabama looking to re, uh, redeem that loss against Tennessee at Tennessee. We'll see how good Alabama is at home. Auburn has looked great as of late. I think I'll take Alabama in this game. I, as I said, I'm higher on Alabama than most people are. I think Alabama has a good chance to pull off a victory here and kind of secure their spot as probably the fourth best team in the SEC. At 8.30, out of the Big East, two teams that took tough losses, both lost by one point. At 8.30, Villanova visits St. John's. Rick Pitino, St. John's. Rick Pitino versus Kyle Neptune matchup. St. John's is favored by two via Ken Palm. This game is on FS1. Tough matchup here. Villanova just kind of seems like the team, too. They just lost at home against the number one team in the nation. They had a lot of, uh, lot of opportunity to win that game. They knew it was a big game. I feel like with Kyle Neptune, they'll kind of just shut down a little bit. And I think Rick Pitino will have St. John's fired up at home. I will take St. John's to cover the two in that game. 
At 8.30, Mississippi State visits Florida in a game where two teams kind of desperately need a win for their, their resumes. We do have Mississippi State in the tournament right now. We have Florida out in our next four out as of now. But Florida is favored minus three in this game. This game's on the SEC network, and I think Florida does pull it off. I'll take Florida minus the three in this game. At 9 o'clock, number 14 previously, we'll see what they are now. Number 10, Illinois visits Northwestern on the Big Ten Network. Illinois favored by four. We'll see if that line will go up because big news, Terrence Shannon was back. He played in their last game and got a standing ovation. Don't know how I feel about that. I don't know the whole story, so we're not going to get too far into that. But it is a big college basketball story that Terrence Shannon is back. He makes such an impact on the floor. Illinois favored by four. Probably take probably take Northwestern in this game. Honestly, Northwestern is so good at home. I expect this line to be even a little bit bigger because of Shannon. Yet it might shrink because I feel like people know that Northwestern is is a very good home team. We saw them beat beat uh, Purdue at home. They're 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 one of the toughest environments to go into and beat. We'll see what the line is. I will take Northwestern if it was four points like this. Also at 9 o'clock out of the Big 12, Kansas State visits number 24, Iowa State. Iowa State favored by 9 via Ken Palm. This game's on ESPN2. I'm in on Jerome Tang, yet I am even more in on Iowa State. I've watched that TCU game, and they were dominant for a while, and then they kind of eased off the gas. This game was out without Taman Lipsy as well, who is their best player by far. If they get Taman Lipsy back, I will definitely be taking Iowa State to cover that 9. At 10.30, Colorado State visits Nevada in a Big Mountain West battle. This game is on FS1. As I said, we talked about some of the top teams in the Mountain West. Take the home team. I'm going to take Nevada minus the one. It might even grow because people are starting to get on this trend a little bit. But Nevada, Nevada is very good, but so is Colorado State. But I will take Nevada in this game. And then we are going to talk about just one game on Thursday and one game on Friday. On Thursday... Out of the WCC, San Francisco visits Gonzaga at 9 o'clock. This game's on ESPN2. Gonzaga favored by 8 via Ken Palm. And I think this is the game Mark Few's squad starts starts to uh, make some noise. I think Gonzaga covers this 8, and I think they win by double figures. I think uh, Gonzaga knows how desperately they need this win. San Francisco, they match up well with Gonzaga, believe it or not. They have a lot of size. I just think Gonzaga's talent is a little bit too much for San Francisco. Gonzaga has been disappointing, but say what you want about them. They are a very talented team. I think at home, they know how bad they need this. I, I think they dominate this game. On Friday, the last game we're going to talk about, the final game of the Sweet 16, at 8 o'clock, Michigan State visits number 11, Wisconsin. Wisconsin favored by four via Ken Palm. This game is on FS1. We had that discussion on who the second best team in the Big Ten is. I say it's Wisconsin. Wisconsin's got it at home. I will take Wisconsin minus the four in this game. We'll see who that team is. Wisconsin needs this win to stay ahead of Purdue in the Big Ten. We'll see. I think Zach Eady's squad is going to come back and end up winning the Big Ten, maybe even by a couple of games. But uh, I think Wisconsin's just more vulnerable to losses than Purdue. Yeah, Purdue has lost at Northwestern and Nebraska, but that win over Iowa, it sold it for me. That's it. That's our Sweet 16. A lot of good games, probably not as loaded as of a slate as we just had on the weekend, but we will have another weekend show, and we'll talk uh, talk about some of those games. We'll give another Sweet 16 where we talk about uh, some of our predictions, some of the lines, some of the early lines that have come out via Ken Palm. We have that Ken Palm subscription. Let's let's put it to good use. Thanks to everyone for uh, for tuning in today. We're uh, we're going to post our we're going to post our rankings on our Instagram and Twitter along with our Facebook. Our Instagram and Twitter is at Bracket Science. With two S's, our Facebook is Bracket Science, two words. Be sure to give us a follow on there. Please give us a like and a follow, whether you're watching this on uh, on YouTube or listening to it on any podcast platform. Give us a like. Let us know how we're doing. Give us your comments. Comment your feelings. Please, please, please subscribe. Whatever you can do to help us grow a little bit it is sincerely appreciated. Keep your comments coming in on Instagram and Twitter, along with Facebook as well. We love interacting with everyone that we can. That's it for our show. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great night. See you later.